From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, the host of Cloud Native Insights. And when we kicked off this program, Cloud Native Insights, we wanted to talk about the innovation and agility that's happening, not just cloud as a location. We're going to drill down a little bit into, of course, one of the very important pieces uh, of, of a company, and that, that's their websites and their applications uh, that, that, that live in that environment. And of course, that's gone through a lot of changes over the years. Uh, any of us that have been in tech uh, for a couple of decades that have walked from the early days uh, to, of course, today's multimedia, globally distributed environment. And everyone during the global pandemic, of course, has been stressing the straining their use of the internet. So really excited to welcome to the program the two co-founders of Netlify. Uh, I have Matt Billman, who is the CEO, and his co-founder, Chris Bach, who is the president both of Netlify, uh, really the company behind Jamstack, which we're going to explain and talk about a bit. Uh, Matt and Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. All right, so let, let's start with, 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 with just some of the basics. I, I expect that some of our audience is, is not familiar with Jamstack. You do do a quick Google search, uh, and it's JavaScript, it's APIs, it's markup, and you say, okay, I understand you know, what, what a bunch of that means, but um, yeah, if you could give us kind of a compare contrast to what web development was before and how Jamstack's really helping to, to revolutionize uh, what's happening in the space. Yeah, so for for many years we built websites and web applications with uh, like with an application based architecture where every website or every application would be this monolithic application with. Um, uh, typically like a load balancer, a set of web servers, application servers, and a database, and every request to a page would go through this whole stack. It would pass through the application layer, talk to the database, fetch templates, uh, merge data and template, build HTML on the fly, and send it back to the user. Um, and um, basically what, what, what we saw happening and what's been happening with, with the Jamstack is this decoupling of the actual front end presentation layer of, of, of the websites and web applications and then the back end layer. Um, and the the advantages there is that if you can really like pre-build the front end application layer, you you can you can take the actual HTML uh, or an application shell and distribute it across a globally distributed network. You can get it into the hands of the of the user's browser very quickly. Uh, and then the back end, what we've seen happening there is that it's split up to all these different APIs and services. You no longer have your one monolithic backend. You have all these different services where some are your own, but a lot of them are other people's services like Stripe or Twilio or Algolia or Contentful. Um, so we've seen this shift to this architecture where you can say that in a way the, the stack has moved up a level from, from, the, from the old tooling where something like the LAMP stack would be, would be common. Uh, really naming like the programming language, the specific web server, the Linux server, the operating system and so on, right? And then up to a level where it's really about getting an application into the browser, using JavaScript as the as the runtime and talking to all these, to this whole new economy of APIs and services. Yeah, Chris, I, I wonder if you could bring us inside your, your customers and the companies that you talk to. I, I think about for the longest time it was, you know, you know, maybe I just outsource my web development, but, you know, website is one of those key components that I, I share my value, I, I share what's going on, I want to be able to change it uh, pretty often, and there's so much more that I can do uh, today than, than I could have done 10 years ago. You know, we've watched that, uh, that, that that march. So help us understand, you know, what skill sets do people need to have? You know, what type of companies are, are using, uh, you know, Jamstack? And, you know, bring in, if you, if you can, you know, Netlify. How is this a business and not just, you know, a, an open source standards movement uh, that's, uh, you know, helping to revolutionize what's happening? Absolutely. I mean, first of all, uh, people using this and companies using this is extremely wide, wide vertical, right? It's very horizontal because it's anyone with a with a digital property, basically, right? But I think what we've seen over the time is is that that we have a lot more challenge uh, challenge that we used to have, right? So we we started off just maybe having the one dot com, right, with limited functionality, um, and today you have a multiple uh, channels, right? You have landing pages, you have domains, you have lots of activities uh, online. 
uh, you have mobile apps and, and commerce is often a big part of it. And I would say, especially in the last few months, uh, there's a lot of people that had uh, the digital convergence points as, as one of many, and now it's the only ones, right? So, so I think it's become extremely important. I also think that when you look at your web infrastructure in general, um, it has been it has been very complex, right? And you need a lot of different people, right? And you need to maintain staging environments, production environments, development environments. You need to 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 have a, a wide set of skills uh, to maintain these things, right? And if a web developer wanted to do um, uh, a lot of things, right, they have to go and tap uh, DevOps and, and 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 so on on the shoulder, right? And I think what the Jamstack is about is saying, hey. You can get so much further as a web developer. Now, if you take the modern built tools, you can take the Git workflows and you wrap around the, the, the browser that has become a full-fledged operating system and the API economy, as Matt was just talking about, you have these workflows or you potentially have these workflows where uh, you can get so much further, right? And that's very much Netlify's mission. So Netlify saw this opportunity of decoupling the front end from the back end and the building from the hosting of, of uh, creating an approach to making websites that would be many times faster because you have multiple points of origin and you don't build for every visit. It's many times safer. There's not that huge surface area of attack. It's much more scalable and so on. Uh, it was sort of a win-win-win, but the problem was that there was no viable workflow. If you take a traditional CDN and you put it in, it doesn't matter really if it's one or the other. As good as they are as services, they're all meant to sit in front of an origin. Right, they're meant to buffer some, and and if you have the gems, like there is no origin uh, in that way. Right, the the networking itself has to be an origin, so it has to be architected quite differently. And then there's a lot of things around CDCI and 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 how you use serverless and so on that all had to be sort of reimagined. And Netlify is that glue layer. It is that platform that takes you from local development all the way out to edge nodes, and and but allows you to mix and match any tool. So it's not program independent. So you can say, well, we use a build tool and that's PHP or Ruby or, or JavaScript or React or Next or whatever it might be, right? And, and, um, uh, and we use uh, these APIs for this server, uh, for, for this property. Over here, we have a commerce site. Over here, we have a .com that needs a huge enterprise CMS with tons of stakeholders. But the thing is that all of those now become something that plugs into your website rather than have to drive the website itself. And that sort of frees up the silos. So when we see people using Netlify, we have companies using Netlify, a big fitness company, for example, that home fitness company that uses us for developer documentation, for all their marketing sites, but also for their .com. But even if you go to the equipment that people have at home and you log in, that's actually using some very nifty identity and, and remote-based access control for Netlify. And, and, and when you, when you, if you watch a video there, it's also going through a Netlify player, right? We have fast food change that has that .com and their marketing sites but also the kiosks down in the store, like the, the menus, the screens there, rather than being an old Windows NC server running some .NET application in a dusty corner, why not have it like that? And so both the category, but also Netlify sort of brings in a solution and because it's decoupled from all those architectural choices, that means that you can now use the solution in a much, much wider uh, setting. And we were sort of first to market during this, uh, uh, the, the Git serverless approach where you just push your serverless functions to Git, that's a Netlify uh, first feature. Deploy previews were, were invented by us and so on. So the Jamstack is, is an extremely wide uh, fundamental architectural approach that matches basically anyone that wants to build web properties. Netlify is this agnostic wide platform that just makes it possible. Yeah, Chris, yeah. I actually, I saw, saw the Peloton use case uh, up on the website <laughs> and you're right, a very different experience uh, to, to you know, rather than I bring my device, is it synced? Does it work with it? Uh, it really integrates those solutions. And you you just brought up serverless, uh, which is actually how I got connected uh, to talk in Netlify. So, Matt, sorry, I, I I think you wanted to jump in there, but was wondering if you could help us. You know, I I look at serverless and what the promise of serverless, of course, is that I don't need to think about that underlying infrastructure. I just let developers build our applications. Uh, feels like that's really the same mission that you have. And the serverless is a piece of your story. So maybe explain and tease that out a little for us if you could. Absolutely, right? I think it, it, it ties in, right? Like the, basically what we saw just from a 
architectural perspective, right? Was was this approach of of really decoupling of um, of, of decoupling front end and back end and so on, right? And and working in a new way that that gave a lot of benefits to the end users in performance and and security and so on, right? But but on the other hand, early on, what we saw was that to adopt that approach. Like developers had to deal with a lot of different moving pieces, like CI, CD, CDNs, uh, what to do about like the API endpoints that did need to be dynamic and so on, right? Um, and and as Netlify, what we saw was with, that we could give like one end-to-end -end workflow for for all of this and make it extremely easy for developers to work with this stack. And serverless plays a really important piece there, right? Because when 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 Amazon pioneered AWS Lambda and took it to the world, right? Like I think. The, the promise uh, also for like the front end web developers of being able to to simply write code and then not have to worry at all about like where is it actually running, how are we scaling it, how are we operating it, and so on, right? Like that's that's a really powerful promise, right? But at the same time, in the same way, what we saw early on was that for a front end team to actually adopt serverless functions as part of the DM stack. It introduced a, a, an, another level of complexity of now having to like manage your serverless functions independent from your front end, figuring out like API gateway endpoints for every one of them, and how about like deployment pipeline for your for your functions layer versus deployment pipelines for the actual front end layer that's that's supposed to talk to those front ends. Uh, how about staging environments versus uh, production environments? How do you how do you manage all that, right? So we saw that there was this inherent, like incredible potential, but also a lot of complexity, right? And as Netlify, we saw that if we could give front-end developers again, like a, a web developers in general, an end-to-end -end workflow where where they can work both with the with the front-end framework, uh, write the code that will get deployed into the browser, but also just have a folder where they can write their serverless functions and then know that that Netlify will take care of all of the wiring, right? Of, when you open a, a, a pull request in Git with a new function, we'll, we'll give you a URL uh, on our globally distributed CDN where you can view both the whole front end, but also the, the function and, and sidestep sort of all of the complexities of linking together API gateways to functions, of managing CICD pipelines and test environments and so on. Uh, and in the end, like the serverless functions starts becoming a really important part of this Jamstack approach, right? Because you have this world where where you have you have a front end that that's often talking to many different APIs and services where again some are your own and some are other people's services, but really often you need some place to 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 glue those together or to build your own custom API endpoint that talks to a couple of them um, and that has access to server side secrets and so on, right? And this idea of of not having to suddenly operate and manage a whole set of servers and and infrastructure just for that part of it. But simply just writing the code and then knowing that 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 you don't have to worry about the operations or scalability or anything around that code, that that's a really powerful paradigm. Yeah, I mean that's one of the real challenges with cloud is you talk about the uh, the, the paradox of choice. There's so many ways to do things, yeah. not necessarily simple. Uh, you know, anybody. You know, I, I I was a blogger for many years. And it was like, well, I'll just use the self-hosted WordPress because I don't want to have to worry about that piece of it. Uh, you know, I, I, Matt, yeah. Matt, I've watched it. You, you did a uh, presentation talking about uh, if I wanted to do WordPress hosted in AWS, that absolutely is, is not simple. Um, I even I heard a podcast from one of your board members, uh, uh, Tim Preston Werner, uh, talking about, you know, we need to be more opinionated. We need to be able to give more guidance to developers. Maybe, maybe Chris, if you could, you know, how are we, you know, when, when the proliferation of choice, uh, you know, keeps increasing, uh, yeah. you know, making sure that people can, how do I make that decision tree and how do we try to keep it simple? <laughs> uh, absolutely. I mean, and I actually think that that's a super relevant question because you have a lot of choice as a, a web developer today. Front-end developers used to cut up Photoshop files and turn them into HTML, right? Now that you advanced markup and they have all these frameworks and flavors of JavaScript to choose between, and there's these powerful build tools and you know all those workflows and the browser can do everything you can imagine, right? And and so yeah, there is a lot of choice out there, right? And I and I think and and for Netlify, what's extremely important is that we are opinionated in the right places, 
And so when it comes to, for example, uh, uh, front-end tooling and build tools and these things that web developers are often sort of uh, uh, faced with having to choose between, um, our role is to make it simple, as simple as possible as to use any of them, but also give you the opportunity of saying, well, this new paradigm allows you to actually mix and match, right? It allows you to use this tool for this property and this tool for this property, and it gives you a ton of flexibility, but still, you know, come under one roof of, of, of a platform like Netlify. And, and I think that is very powerful. And so, so we also don't want to choose for you. Um, we want to inform your choices and we want to make it uh, as, as easy as possible to go and say, hey, these are my needs. What should I be going, wh what direction should I be going? And of course we work with enterprise clients of, on migration services and, and, and so on, right? And where we help them a lot with that. But, um, uh, but, but if we lock down on a single flavor or a single build tool or a single front end framework, then um, then we also limit the application of, of of what we bring to market and 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 we want to remain a little more open ended there. Um, but I think there is a lot of complexity. A, a, a platform like Netlify is all about simplification. So all that wiring that Matt just mentioned that at least goes right. You don't spend hours configuring varnish caching and trying to find those edge cases. It just works. And, and that's a huge uh, a game changer for, for a lot of people, right? But, but there's definitely parts of the ecosystem that has a lot of choice. Uh, and, um, and we do our best to inform. Um, and I think on the handholding part, at, you know, adjacent to that is the story of, well, do we then stop using content management systems? Like, is this a whole new, is it out with the old and in with the new? And I would say, you still have a lot of those needs. Right? You still have uh, non-technical people, for example, that, that needs to be able to update and create and maintain content and so on, right? Um, and create content. And so you very often will need an, an, an e-commerce solution or, or content management system and so on. But what we're seeing there is that we're speaking basically with every single major CMS out there um, that are saying, we are working on a headless system or we already have a headless version or we just gone full headless. That means that we work decoupled so we don't no longer need to build the site but we just provide like an independent uh, source of, of content. And then it plugs into a platform like Netlify. So that can bring a lot of simplicity. So now you just have to maintain your content, but you don't have to worry about all the different environments and what is up to date and how does my infrastructure look like. You press a button, it commits to get, you get a deploy preview and it looks the same everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm curious uh, what impact uh, the, the current global pandemic has had on Netlify and your customers. I, I, I saw you've got a, a COVID tracking project that you've done, but also now just there's, there's different considerations when I think about what services I need to access from the web and what kind of connectivity the ultimate end user would have. So what learnings have you had? What, 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 what's involved there? Um, I mean, obviously we, we it depends a lot on, as, as Chris mentioned, right? Like uh, the Jamstack is, is adopted horizontally across all, all kinds of, of, of areas and businesses and so on, right? So, so we've of course seen businesses uh, in sectors that are having a hard time. And on the other hand, we've seen businesses in sectors that, that, that are exploding, right? Like um, um, we, we, we did immediately when, when when the lockdown started happening and the pandemic started happening, we set aside like a free plan for for projects working in the space um, of uh, uh, of of tackling the information sharing around COVID and and uh, finding solutions and so on. Um, and that that was really interesting to see. You mentioned the COVID tracking project, right? Which was which which was a project like built in a short time by 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 a small group of distributed incredibly talented uh, uh, front end developers and scientists and so on right and um, and i think it was interesting to see like that how how the jamstack and and our tooling and so on also really made it possible for them to build as a small distributed team this this um this set of 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 data uh, information and tooling um, to a global audience, right? Seeing huge traffic peaks at at time, and and just knowing that the architecture and our infrastructure could could handle it for them. All right, uh, Chris, I, I, I've got one a, a, a little bit uh, off to the side here. When I, when I look at what Netlify is doing, you you talk about 
uh, having an open and independent web. And while we're, we are fully supportive of that, we're a little concerned sometimes. If you look at what's happening across the globe, uh, there's yeah. a lot of discussions. Will the internet actually fragment? Uh, you know, will certain countries wall off certain environments? Any concerns there? What, 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 what do you look at? Uh, what, what, what are you hearing from your customers uh, when you talk about uh, that, that mission? It is, I mean, I, it is a, uh, it's one of the, the big challenges of our time, right? I mean, I think we all maybe took for given the internet as the standard it became, right? The, the way that you can publish without permission is, is, is pretty magnificent, right? And it would be indescribably painful for civilization if we, if we lost that, right? And, and I think fragmentation is, is, is something that we all have to sort of um, worry around. From the way we see it is that the web, the traditional monolithic approach, right, to, to web led to a, a web that wasn't secure enough and wasn't scalable enough and, and wasn't performant enough. And that's, for example, what opened the door for for mobile applications, right, where where it just didn't make sense to pull in the UI every time you turn a page. So we ended up with a form that said we pre-built the application, you download it, and then you speak to servers for anything that needs real-time updating, right? And that makes perfect sense. That's basically the same architecture that we are bringing to the web at very large scale. Um, but the, of course, the problem is that now there are gatekeepers there, right? That the people you have to ask for permission to publish and so on. And and there are other attempts um, to say, hey, we need a performant web. And there's a very big players out there that say, eh, let's come over and just, you know, do we even need to call it the internet? Can we just call it our company, WebSnet? I'm not going to name any names here, right? But leading down is what we call walled, walled gardens that are, that are great for absolutely no one except for the company, right? And and, and, and what we believe is, is that if you have a web that is secure and is scalable and, and, and is performant enough uh, for, to justify at least the architecture maintaining, right, and not having to run into to any wall gardens and, and still say, no, you don't need to use a handful of commercial platforms if you want to be heard rather than have your own web properties on your own custom domains, right? Um, I think that's the part of the, the open, independent, viable web that we're fighting for. Right, um, basically one that in, in, in adopts and keeps adopting an, an architecture that is something that, that levels the playing field. And then I would also say for Netlify, I mean, a, a few years before we started, like try configuring your own CDN, right? And like that was reserved for the very, very large tech players. Now you can come in, you can literally click a button on Netlify and get custom domain and HTTPS and a, post process site that's globally distributed and automatically integrated into Git, right? And that's on the freemium plan, you know? And, and so as a startup, you can level set together with, with everyone else and be available widely across the world without performance issues immediately. And, and so in that way, I'm also seeing that's a democratization of performance, right? That means that, that, that that's great. And, and for places where you see developing economies, where you often have brownouts, where you often can't depend on, on having rival service and this locally and so on, right? This idea of having decoupled that and having something that's just automatically, you know what, don't even worry about it because it's already uh, ready to go in all these pockets all around the world. That's a huge game changer. That's actually, we see a lot of adoption of the jams that are going to find in those places as well, right? Because that's just such a promise to the architecture. So. So I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm also very concerned about a fragmented uh, web for political reasons as well, right, across the globe, right? But, uh, and from our angle, the way we fight for it is, is to make sure that, that it maintains uh, using an architecture um, that, that, that makes it accessible for everyone. Yeah, I, I, I heard uh, many years ago uh, a friend of mine said, uh, if you're a technologist, it means that in general you are a technology optimist. Uh, which I definitely try to be. So uh, I, I, I love, Chris, how you've just brought in some of the, the potential and opportunity. Matt, I want to give you just, you know, people out there, they hear like, oh, 5G is coming. It's going to, you know, completely change the world. Um, anything that you're seeing on your side as to, you know, real opportunities that we will see, uh, you know, just a, a step function in what uh, your companies uh, using Jamstack, you know, partnering with Netlify and your ecosystem. Uh, what, what are some of the early things that you see that, that, that are exciting you uh, down the line uh, for, for, for this? Yeah, like part of it is simply like the whole ecosystem around the, the, the Jamstack growing up and the tooling, the APIs, the frameworks av av available around it and the, and, the, and the level of innovation that's triggered and especially how it's triggering like in 
especially how we are seeing like the potential for 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 small distributed teams to work together and build like things with a with a global impact in in a short time um i remember a, a couple of years ago we we did a, a hackathon with uh, together with free code camp um and and of course like since it was with free code camp it was mostly like teams were were mostly fairly fairly new to programming and so on right like and um it was pretty amazing to see what over a weekend like with this architecture and with this tooling right with the vendors that were present there and and helping out and so on what these small teams could actually get to, done in, in in a weekend right like i remember the 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 winning team had had an app where the whole room would like see an, an an image on on the on the main stage screen and then uh, on their phone try to place that image on the map and you would real time see like how people ranked how close they got and get a winner and so on right and and that was all just from combining like apis and tooling like uh, like hasura like netlify like onadb like google maps and so on right and i think in in some way we shouldn't forget like just how much this kind of ecosystem of readily available a APIs and services around this front end stack yeah. is allowing people to build things that like years ago would have taken like a very big team, like probably like a year to build, right? Like, and suddenly you can have a relatively small, small group of, of relatively new programmers build something really impressive, right? So I think that's a trend we'll, we'll, we'll see continue in accelerating, right? And, 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 me and Chris are, are personally in, in, involved in, 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 in advising and helping out a lot of like these new startups in the, in the space that are trying to bring new tooling to the world that, that, makes, that makes more and more of these things possible and, and accessible. Well, Chris and Matt, I really appreciate you both joining. Uh, such an exciting space. Talk about the cloud uh, agility and innovation, such a robust ecosystem. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank Thanks you. for having us. And I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, thank you for joining and look forward to hearing more about your Cube Insight.